Thank you very much. Let me start by saying thank you to Michael and to Sarah, to Launch DFW for giving us the opportunity to present for my O and to the other companies as well. It's a great event and we're happy to be here. I'm here with my two co-founders, Travis Tidwell and De Denise Kay. And before I climb into Formio, let me just tell you the story that drives Formio. This is an application on a tablet. It could be on a mobile phone, it could be on a web-based device, a, a desktop device, it doesn't matter. It's, a mo it's an application that you all know you deal with them every day of the week. And it has a form on it. And that form is where you enter your data. Just a few years ago, a software developer could depend on the fact that the data coming into that form was directly connected to the server that he was designing the app for, couldn't he or she? Web 3.0 is here, and that is no longer the case. There's a paradigm shift in how applications are built. Now the front end is separated from the back end. The server is over here, but the front end is here. How does the developer deal with that? They have to deal with these insidious little things called APIs, Application Programmable Interfaces. You all know about them. Every other developer or uh, presenter on this uh, agenda has APIs in their product. And they show themselves in forms in the application. Form.io yeah, Form was initiated with the single mission to be the industry leading provider of combined form and API platforms. No one else has made that connection before. So we'll talk about that. Form and API combined. Form and APIs are one and the same thing. More important than the product is the team. Three co-founders with business experience, compelling, uh, compatible, and complementary skill sets. Technology lead, business and finance lead, and sales and marketing lead, supported by a now nine-person team. We founded the company in March, raised $500,000 to get the product into the market, launched it right on schedule. Built the team, launched it. We have our initial customers and revenue in place as we close out the year. This graph didn't come through. Web 3.0 is here, driven by the mass proliferation of front-end devices, as I mentioned, the separation of the front-end and the back-end, sharing data across third-party systems, and tying into legacy systems, issues that all of you deal with every day of the week. And they're all connected by APIs. APIs are the connective tissue across the internet that manifest themselves in the applications as forms. Form.io is the I.O. of forms. APIs are growing. Just look at the indicators of interest. Big data, RESTful APIs, AngularJS, Internet of Things, all correspond to the fact that we're at the beginning of something that's growing and not going away very quickly. What's wrong with APIs? They're driven by, again, by the separation of the front end to the back end. They take two people in today's world, a front end developer and a back end developer, that have to handshake and go back and forth to get these things taken care of. And it's time consuming, costly, and iterative to support. Form.io is the first combined form and API platform that gives front end developers the ability to build a form intuitively as they know, implement it directly into their app, and have the API platform built for them. In addition to their own APIs, we give them a platform of standard third-party interfaces of uh, providers like Microsoft Office, Dropbox, SendGrid, Twilio, other, uh, and an expanding universe of third-party tie-ins, allowing them to build complex roles and permissions of uh, applications with tie-in to third-party systems. As such, Form.io positions itself between traditional form players that don't live and breathe with APIs and traditional API players that don't build applications. We're the only ones to have done this and we're 10 months in and we've yet to see a com competitive product that does what we do. What I love about this business, leave the technology aside, we serve software developers that they themselves serve massive end user verticals with multi-billion dollar spends in every single one of them. It doesn't matter which one they are. The problem is ubiquitous for all of them. So it's a huge market. We've already got touch points in multiple business verticals. What I also love about this business from an investment perspective is our go-to-market strategy. Go-to-market strategy is selling through platform providers that then sell to the end users. What I love about this business is we can also sell through the providers who want to get at those people. Large ecosystems of developers that are looking to extend into applications through who? Form.io. We have growth opportunities through the product, through our channels, and through our industry segments. We have a subscription-based model, freemium-based. Try it for free, as long as you want, $100, $250, $500, depending on the number of apps and the scale of your apps. 
We hit every single milestone in 2015, and we're right on budget and right on schedule, and we're looking for the next round investors, so we hope that you're in the room. to fit a lot into five minutes. Uh, so a very impressive... Yeah, I commonly say this is, uh, this is an only child uh, product and it belongs in the family of other children. So we know that we have a number of different exits. We already have a lot of attention from Google Ventures. We were one of two people at Tech TechCrunch Disrupt that Google Ventures identified as having a continuing interest in. We belong in a portfolio of other services like Salesforce or uh, many others like them that will fit this extension into their existing portfolio. And we see that happening in the, uh, conservatively, the two to five year window. Yes. Yeah, it's not a determinate fact, but we certainly have experience with the risk of offending somebody in this room. The, the, the traditional developer who takes a certain amount of territoriality and pride in the complexity and esotericness of APIs. So the full stack developer will articulate, hey, I got that handled, it's my business. But for every one of them, there's 10 out there going, there's not enough people in the industry, there's not enough women in the industry, and there's not enough resource to, uh, to we do support women in, women in programmers, by the way. So on that level, we've experienced it, but not in any material way. Okay, right back here. All right, you made a comment that you said y'all's company was the first to combine two aspects. Is that correct? And can you expand on that, and why are you the first company that has seen that opportunity? Yeah, thank you. Two or three factors all at once. We were born and raised previously, previous working experience together in a form-based complex registration system company that had very keen competencies with forms and relationships, roles and permissions, authentications. And we discovered the inherent connection between forms and APIs. So that's the starting point. The second is, we came in on the other side of the paradigm. Web 3.0 is here. We're a cloud-based company, so we're not burdened with the friction and the, 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 infra, the inertia of having been built on Web 2.0 platforms. So we can build, we eat our own dog food. Our front end of our product is not attached to the back end of our product. Our product is our customer's product. We built it on our own product. And so we are the only ones to have started with a very focused connection that allows us to bring a value proposition that's hard to react to competitively because of the inertia on your existing platform. So I might be one of those uh, full stack programmers, 18 years of experience. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, is this basically a drag and drop form utility? Because I'm, I'm not understanding the value proposition specifically, and that's probably because of my background. Yeah, thank you, and I have to cover it in five minutes. So, but it is a drag yeah. and drop <laughs> workflow for every, from someone like yourself, there's a front end developer that doesn't have a full competency in dealing with APIs. So this idea of they know their resources, they know what they need in their front end, they're usually handing them to you in a spec sheet saying, please provide me an API and you spend your time doing it and then you hand it back to them and you hope to God they haven't changed their mind in that amount of time. And so what he, we do is provide a drag and drop workflow that, is, uh, that takes advantage of the fact that the JSON schema that defines the form is in fact one and the same with the schema that defines the API. And with that simple insight, there's a lot of liberation and a lot of capabilities that you can leverage by taking advantage of that full swagger documentation, full API documentation to build your own APIs on this platform and tie them into your applications without the need for having such um, uh, superior expertise that you bring to the table. Um. Hi, uh, I have a question. Uh, technically speaking, is there any other way to solve the problem? Or this is the only way? Uh, I, don't th I don't suggest, well, we're mean stack based, just to mention that. So again, we're, we're built on a, an Angular front end, no JS background. There are a multitude of nuanced ways, but we, we not only think. I read just the other day about the end of mobile apps. 
Mobile apps were a bridge to the fact that applications built on this type of structure are going to be blur those lines. We believe that whether it's another specific solution, it will look a lot like this solution with different, uh, different platform nuances, whether it's tying into CMSs or the like. The details will be slightly different. We have React front ends and different interfaces, but so they'll, they'll be the same structure. We believe this will be the mechanism to eliminate the inherent complexity of APIs that has existed in the first five to 10 years of APIs. How do you address scalability? Wonderfully. What I love, I mean, what I love about this is it's inherently scalable. We're currently running on ABS. We dot, most of our current customers are in Docker deployments. We scale on their systems, not ours. You can use our systems if you have an application, but if you don't, you're an enterprise, you scale on your own systems. Nice work. Well, how about that? They hit every...